My favorite part of the Disney Legends series Josh, Shannon, and I are doing on Network 1901 is that we are highlighting creators and contributors to some of the most relatable pop culture characters, stories, and places we know. With Walt Disney's image still at the forefront of the Disney empire, even decades after his death, it can be easy to overlook all of the other great minds and talents that were at times more influential to certain movies and ideas than Walt ever was. And though we still give Walt Disney credit for movies made long after his passing, there are some people working for the company that didn't even get the credit for creating some of the things that they did. It can even happen to a valued veteran, like it did for Disney legend Joe Grant. The story of Lady and the Tramp started in the late 1930s with a man named Joe Grant. He and his wife had a Springer Spaniel named Lady, who Grant did a drawing of, showing it to Walt at dinner one night. Walt found the character charming, loving the way that the fur mimicked a sort of dress, suggesting Grant come up with a storyboard for the character. In Grant's storyboard, he explored the life of a dog replaced by the arrival of a new baby into the family, through antics with Siamese cats and a sneaky rat, but it was just Lady's story, no tramp-like character. Walt felt that though the character was cute, charm and loveliness alone did not a story make. The project was put on hold, possibly destined to die. but. One day, Walt read a story in Cosmopolitan magazine called Happy Dan, the Cynical Dog by Ward Green, and thought a personality like that would be perfect contrast to Lady's personality. Walt asked Ward Green to rewrite a novelized version of Joe Grant's original story, including the character that we now know as Tramp, which was finished in 1953. During this time, Joe Grant was no longer part of the Disney studio, and Ward Green's novel was considered the main source material for the film, leading to Joe Grant not receiving his due credit in the final cut of the film released in 1955. The company even went as far as to say that the story was actually inspired by Walt gifting his wife Lily a puppy in a hat box. And whether or not Walt's story really happened, it was not the story that sparked the idea of the film. It's regrettable to think that Joe Grant didn't get the credit he deserved at the time, but perhaps we can pay tribute to the story and legacy of a man who was described by fellow Disney legends Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston as the studio authority on design and appearance of nearly everything that moved on the screen in the book Disney Animation The Illusion of Life. Joe Grant had said, The atmosphere was relaxed but exciting. I was terribly impressed, referring to the Walt Disney Company. One day, Grant was phoned by Walt Disney to join the studio in 1933, where the first projects he worked on were as a caricature artist for the animated shorts, Mickey's Gala Premiere, and Parade of the Award nominees a job he likely got because of his formal training at Chouinard Art Institute and his background in caricature art, which he did prominently from 1928 to 1933, when he was a staff writer for the Los Angeles Record newspaper. Joe Grant was the right-hand man of Walt Disney, according to John Canemaker, author of the book Two Guys Named Joe, which also highlights artist and storyteller Joe Ranch, another Disney and Pixar notable. If you're interested in the book which explores the way storytelling was done by these two men, using anecdotes alongside storyboards and photographs, I'll leave a link to our Amazon affiliate listing for it in the description below. Though it's strange to think of the free-thinking personality of an artist getting involved in something like war, the Walt Disney Studio was involved in creating propaganda posters and videos during World War II using characters such as Donald Duck, who were known worldwide in allied countries. And Joe Grant was one of the artists heavily involved in these projects. Interestingly enough, the Disney Studio artists were visiting places like the Pentagon in order to create propaganda pieces during this time, which required Joe Grant and other employees at the studio to have special security clearance. Most notably during the wartime, Grant worked on the anti-Nazi propaganda film, Der Führer's Face, 
inspired by the Charlie Chaplin film Modern Times, an influence that you can clearly see in the scene where Donald works on the belt line. Grant describes the film as a very wild and irresponsible piece. Oh, and did I mention, Joe Grant was Jewish, part of the racial and religious group who were the main targets of Adolf Hitler's genocidal abomination. You may have heard the myth that Walt was anti-Semitic, but Joe Grant was very outspoken, denying these rumors, claiming, as far as I'm concerned, there was no evidence of anti-Semitism. I think the whole idea should be put to rest and buried deep. He was not anti-Semitic. Some of the most influential people at the studio were Jewish. It's much ado about nothing. I never once had a problem with him in that way. The myth should be laid to rest. Josh from Network 1901 actually talks about this myth, among other legends about Walt Disney in his podcast, Modern Mouse, where he tries to explain why people have the tendency to latch onto stories like these. As people, we just love to create stories, even if they bend the truth way too far. It's almost like we're trying to see how much we can get away with. Walt's mythology still continues to intrigue me. As a fan and historian of Walt, it's kind of a burden. But I can't help but to think that these myths, whether they're good or bad, translate to who we want him to be. If you don't like Walt Disney or any of his movies or the theme parks, of course you're going to associate him with being a racist, sexist Nazi. If you're a fan, maybe you're holding out for that day where you turn on the news to see that his brain has been preserved thanks to a big giant block of ice and some weird science, and he'll be producing a new film next year. Whatever story that you choose to believe, I think it says more about you and your personality than you probably realize. If you liked what you heard in that clip, there's a link to where you can listen to the full episode in the description below if you're interested in hearing more. During his time at the Disney Company, Joe Grant was credited and sometimes uncredited with writing the story direction and or character designs on Disney classics such as Dumbo, Fantasia, Alice in Wonderland, Bambi, and Pinocchio and wartime features, Saludos Amigos, and Make Mine Music. He also created The Evil Witch for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Grant also worked on lesser-known shorts, like The New Spirit, a film designed to explain to Americans why paying their taxes was important, or Education for Death, Victory Through Air Power, and Reason and Emotion patriotic and anti-Nazi films used to educate people on what was going on with the World War. Joe Grant actually regarded Reason and Emotion as being one of his most important war-related films, saying it had depth and weight to it, and is a concept that could be applicable to any aspect of life. The short won an Oscar for Best Animated Short in 1943, and has been compared to Disney Pixar's Inside Out. According to an article from the LA Times, during work on Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1933, Walt Disney came up to Joe Grant in a hallway of the Hyperion Studio in Los Feliz and asked, what are we going to do for an encore? That question led to the establishment of the character model department, which Grant headed with his vast knowledge of art, illustration, and literature. It served as a research and development department for animated films and generated many of the ideas that became classic Disney films. The artists worked out ideas for stories and characters and made model sheets and three-dimensional figures that showed how to draw the characters. Grant left the Disney studio in 1949 when the character model department disbanded and after a falling out with Walt running a ceramics business and a greeting card business, and then, once again, receiving a call from the Disney Studios. He then returned to the studio in 1989, 40 years later, to work on Beauty and the Beast. He stayed working four days a week, contributing to animated films like Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, Hunchback of Notre Dame, 
Hercules, Mulan, Fantasia 2000, Pixar's Monsters, Inc., and Lilo and Stitch. Grant died nine days before his 97th birthday on May 6, 2005. Grant's final project was Lorenzo, a short film based on his cat who got into a fight with two poodles in 1949. Lorenzo received an Academy Award nomination in 2005. Joe Grant had the last two films he worked on before his death dedicated to him, Disney's Chicken Little and Pixar's Up. Grant worked for the Walt Disney Company at a time in which they still didn't realize how successful their full-length features would be, and each animated film was being approached without a defined quote-unquote Disney formula. To be able to create many of the characters and animate scenes that have stuck with audiences and pop culture since their inception is an impressive feat for a group of animators, story writers, and artists working for a company that hadn't developed a reputation for their films quite yet. It's the minds and hearts of people like Joe Grant that shaped the true power the brand has today. Roy E. Disney, nephew of Walt Disney, said of Joe Grant, I think there was always a gentle sweetness to Joe in his work. There's a gentility in everything he touched. But there's also great sophistication. He was one of the truly great craftsmen of our art, but he always saw his craft as a way to communicate ideas. If you are interested in learning more about the Walt Disney Animation journey from beginning to present, watch our Disney Animation Eras Explained series. And for more on the individuals who helped shape and create the empire we are such great fans of today, check out the other videos in our Disney Legends series. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And subscribe for more on the history of Disney Animation. I'm Angie, and until next time, hurry back.